Hi, my name is Margie. Today I'm going to show you how to make this mid-century modern sofa for your 112 scale dollhouse. 112 is one inch equals one foot. So it's a really easy scale to work with, I find. Uh, small enough to be miniature, but big enough to let you get some neat detailing stuff done. So I wanna warn you ahead of time, I don't do full on every single thing is measured out for you ahead. I do start out with the template with the basic shapes and the basic sizes. I, I do a lot of cut to fit on my um, furniture. So I, I cut as I go, as opposed to measuring it ahead of time and cutting it then. So this trim, this base, even the legs, I didn't have a size when I started. I had a size for the couch and the cushions. The rest of it, I kind of do it as I go. So if you're the kind of person who needs it full on step by step, this might not be for you. But if you're the kind of person who likes fast, fairly fast, quick tutorials that just get you inspired and started, then jump in and I'll show you what it looks like at the end in its setting. For now, let's start with the tutorial. I start every project with a sketch or an inspiration picture with some basic measurements and notes on materials. Please note that in this case, or I've written sherry wood, it actually means a tongue depressor painted a reddish brown color with some acrylic paint. From there, I make a detailed template with precise measurements. If you want to recreate this project, I suggest you pause the screen now, take a screenshot of this image so that you can refer back to it. So let's talk about materials and supplies. Aliens tacky glue is my favorite. It's a little hard to get right now and I happen to be out of it. But you can substitute any fast, you know, quick drawing white glue, carpenter's glue. Not quick drawing, but they, some of them set up faster than others and that's really what you're looking for. Just makes the job a whole lot easier with less waiting time in between. I do also use a glue gun for certain things. I want to caution you though, I don't use it for anything structural. And I always use one with a really fine point, like a precision point. And I do, in this case, use a fabric glue stick. I also use um, masking tapes and painter's tape as clamps. And you'll see how I do that a little bit later on. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense to clamp an object, especially if it's a fine fabric. Basic tools like scissors, an X-Acto knife with a really sharp blade is important. Your usual pencil ruler. Nothing fancy here, just basic stuff. Uh, to create this particular piece of furniture, I started with a base of foam core or foam board. And you can get that just about anywhere. It's usually with the Bristol board in the Bristol board aisle. It's pretty cheap and pretty easy to work with, but you do need a nice sharp knife. The wood in this case, I used tongue depressors for the trimming part of the, the trim part of the wood. And then I used um, doweling for the leg. I think this was quarter inch doweling which I cut into three quarter inch lengths and then I tapered so that they had a sort of a tapered leg to them. And I used a piece of, I believe this is 1 16th or maybe 1 8th balls of basswood. It doesn't really matter. You don't want it too thick. I like to use wood that I can cut easily with an X-Acto knife. And then I have my quilt batting that I surround the cushions with and whatever fabric you're going to use. In this case, I had purchased this vinyl off of Amazon. You want to get something fairly thin. The thinner the fabric is, the better it is going to be, the easier it is going to be for you to work with and get neat edges. Uh, you can harvest leather and vinyl from things like old purses and coats and whatnot, but just remember to try and look for something that's fairly thin. So using a template I made earlier, I redraw the shapes onto the foam board uh, and using a really, really sharp knife, X-Acto knife on, and a metal ruler, I'll cut out the shapes and I'll try and keep my knife as perpendicular as I can so that I don't get a slanted edge, which is really easy to do. Again, a sharp blade is super, super important here. Now I'm going to take my uh, quilt batting and cover each piece. I cut kind of roughly. I don't uh, measure it ahead of time. I just make sure that it's big enough to cover all the edges. 
because I, what I like to do is glue it down and then trim after with this with really nice sharp little scissors. So again, I'm using the fine tip glue gun with the fabric glue stick. Glue it, wrap it, press it a little bit, and just continue on. And then I'll take my fine uh, crafting scissors and trim off all of the excess when the glue is drying. The next step is wrapping each piece with your vinyl fabric, whatever it is you're using to cover things with. Again, I just make sure I cut the fabric big enough to cover all the edges and I'll trim it up after. There's a dozen different ways to do this. Uh, it, and a lot of it depends on uh, how thick your fabric is. I also want you to be really aware of what sides are actually going to show and what sides aren't going to show. So if you've got some an edge that's going to be hidden, completely hidden in the construction, make that your rough edge uh, and save your precision gluing for the parts that are going to show. It's a lot like wrapping a gift. Um, I have a, a little method and I'm showing it to you here where I put the glue in the corner. I kind of pinch the corners and then I'm going to, I'll do that to all four corners and then I'll take my scissors and I'll, I'll trim that off. And again, I'm using the glue gun here, but in a couple of minutes or in the next step, I'm going to switch to some different kind of glue and, and I'll tell you why. So I cut these off. I, I find getting rid of as much bulk as you can possibly get rid of is the way to get the neatest edge. So if you were to wrap this like a, a, you would gift wrap a box, uh, it would work. But you, you're going to have bulky corners, and I just find I get neater edges if I get rid of every extra piece of fabric that is not necessary that I possibly can get rid of. So you'll see when I'm done this little, I know I'm doing it fast, but otherwise it just gets really boring, so that's why I'm going fast. Uh, so I trim everything off, I make sure it's nice and flat and smooth. And then I will glue down this final piece once I've gotten rid of all the little nooks and crannies, bumps, nice and flat and smooth. I'll trim that off, make sure it's straight no matter what way you're looking at it. Remember, you're going to have a couple of sides that aren't going to show. So you can keep that in mind when you go to sort of to the next step. And you can see when I cut these corners, I've got a little gap. What I'm going to do now is take a different kind of glue. So I'm going to take Aileen's Tacky if I have it because it's clear drawing. Toothpick and get it right in there and cover as many of those edges as you can. Use a little bit of painter's tape and wrap it so that you've got that corner nice and tight. And when, it, when you undo that, it's going to be really hard to see the uh, edge. Now I do recommend maybe possibly making an extra piece or two at the beginning and practice a few because you do get better the more that you do. Practice does make perfect and this one is far by far from perfect but I also have a few tricks I'll show you later on to cover up any of those imperfections and remember about the sides that are covered. So in this case I only need the bottom edge that's facing out the top and the front to be neat. You can take a piece of uh, extra leather or fabric cut a strip and trim it if you want to, and it would look something like this. So the pieces are all covered and assembled. I started by assembling the two base pieces first. I used wood glue for this, or Eileen's tacky glue, and I clamped it with the masking tape, wrapped it tight, let it dry first before I added the back pieces and the cushions. Don't try and do it all at once, it'll drive you crazy. Do the base first and then attach your backs and your cushions and do them in a separate step and then you can mask and tape them as well. It takes time and patience but it's, it's well worth it in the long run. 
So when I started this project, I had a whole different couch in mind. Uh, the one to the left was blockier, uh, chunkier, a little, just a different era. And I like it, but I don't think I liked it for this house. I will do a tutorial on that at some point. There's still some cushions that have to go on. I haven't quite finished it yet. But I switched gears, and I really prefer the one on the right. Uh, you'll notice when I touch it, though, it's a little bit wobbly. It's not all attached together yet, so I won't do anything until the end. When it's all glued and dry, I will then sand the bottom of the legs and make sure that it's nice and solid. So here's the base with the legs that I made out of the basswood. I basically took the piece of basswood, measured the bottom once it was finished. Things change shape and size when you start adding quilt batting and fabric. So that's why I have trouble measuring these things ahead of time. I'd rather wait, get that bottom cover done and then built the base. The legs are three quarter inches. I tapered the end. I think I cut the legs at a 60 degree angle so they'd be slanted but they could also just be perfectly straight. Uh, this is a kind of construction part where I want to use something stronger than a glue gun. I want to use a permanent wood glue or, or again Eileen's. Uh, I said that once and it sounded like aliens but it's actually Eileen's tacky glue. Sorry Eileen. I like to spread it really thin with a spatula or your finger, but because I'm using other stuff right now, I use the little spatula just to keep it from squishing out uh, the edges when you do put the uh, masking tape or clamp on. Um, you can, of course, wipe it up when it's wet, but just as easy to get rid of the excess ahead of time. So get a nice, thin, even layer on there. Get rid of the excess if you can. Uh, I always also look at the edges of my wooden make sure that I put the best edge on the part that's going to show. Um, flip your couch over, center it on there nicely. You've got a little bit of play time, but uh, you don't want a whole bunch of glue squishing all over the place either. Now, I'm, I really want this clamped. I really want some pressure on it. So, And I don't want to clamp that fabric because I might leave a dent in it. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of wood, put it on top of the cushion, and then put my clamps on so that I don't have any um, marks on the leather. It would probably come out, but I think it's probably going to give a better overall clamp anyway because it's clamped straight all the way down. And to get this color of wood, I basically just used a chocolate brown um, acrylic, but I added a little bit of red to it, and then I put some clear polycrylic over it. So I've let the base dry till it's good and solid, and now I'm going to put on the trim on the top edge. Again, I'm going to use uh, wood glue because it's kind of a structural element, um, and it's going to help make everything solid. Uh, I don't want any messy edges, so I'm going to be pretty careful about uh, wiping up the excess. Put it on, and I'm going to use my masking tape here as clamping, and then I'll let it dry again for as long as I can stand to leave it. Make sure the masking tape is nice and tight. Sometimes I put it on and then I have to lift it and, and sort of reapply it. You can also use painter's tape. You can use clamps if it works. I just find that there's a lot of instances where clamping doesn't work on this kind of thing. And I think with fine fabric and leather too, you don't want to leave a mark in it. So here we are in the living room of the old Newburgh. It's This is an old vintage kit that was never put together that I'm building in a completely different way. Uh, lamps are lit, the fire is glowing, the pillows are plumped, the curtains are hung. There's the new sofa that I'm really pleased with. I like it a lot better than the one I had originally planned on. I think that's all for now. Uh, we are ready to entertain except for COVID. And next time, we'll have a look at those bar stools. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. That's all for now. Bye.